Welcome to Smalltalk Daily for Friday, April 2nd, 2010. This morning I wanted to look at some basic file handling operations and take a look at some of the basic API points in a class called file name and in the stream categories. And this is how you're going to handle reading files and eventually writing files as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at the reading side and at the basic protocol conventions in the, in the system. If you look for class file name, you'll find that this is the entry point for handling files. So let's just go ahead and do this file name named dot directory contents. And that should work pretty much on any platform Syncom Smalltalk supports because the dot convention for the current directories handled on Windows, Unix, and everything else. So let's go ahead and do an inspect on this. And you see that it gives you a listing of all the files. And it turns out I've got a ton of files in this directory. There's 488 of them. So if I go ahead and pick one of them, I've got something here. So there we go. We've got everything listed in the directory. Now let's go ahead and browse class file name and take a look at what I'm doing with this. So let's go ahead and do that. And you see the class file name is an abstract class. If I switch to hierarchy view, you'll see there's a bunch of concrete classes under. So there's FAP for PCs, there's NTFS for PCs, there's Unix file name, Mac OS X, OS X file name under that. So you've got different concrete classes depending on the platform you're supporting. However, you don't need to worry about that. That gets created for you based on a lookup the code does at runtime. So you can do this in a completely platform neutral way. The places you want to look for the protocol I'm looking at right now is either file utilities, so you can copy a file to some place, you can delete a file, you can look for file names that match a certain string, and down here at the bottom you'll also find utilities, and there are some things down here also, contents of entire files, so you can pick a file and just read the whole thing without having to worry about stream handling. So if you know that, for instance, it's a relatively short file and you just want to pick the whole thing up into memory, that's an easy shortcut. But what I'd encourage you to do is go ahead and open up the browser, look at class file name, and look at file utilities to find all the things you can do with files in Smalltalk. And that's pretty much where you're going to go to do most of the things you want to do. Don't even bother looking at the subclasses. You'll never really need to deal with those directly. Now, having said that, let's go to something more concrete. Let's say you want to open up a file and read a line by line. Well, the simplest way to do that is to do a stream as file, you know, your name of your file, as file name, read stream. It turns out that as file name is the same as doing file name named. It's just a shortcut. And then read stream is a message you can send to file objects. There's also an analogous write stream, and there's an analogous read write stream if you want to be able to read and write. And there's an append stream if you just want to open something up to go ahead and concatenate to the end of the file instead of having to, you know, overwrite it. But in this case, we're just reading, so we'll create that, and then we're going to just do a stream at end test. And this is a very common thing to do. Ask the stream if it's at the end. While that's not true, go ahead and just add to my list everything I pick up from the next line. So let's go ahead and do this, and then we'll look at our list object. So we'll inspect that, and you can see it picked this up. Now, just to show you what's in there, let's do a file open. And if you're on Windows or Mac, you'll get a native platform dialog. So I'll just start typing lines. And you can't see it. I'll make this a little smaller. You can see that it's gone ahead and selected lines. So I'll open that. And this is the file, CR delimited lines. And here it came in like that. Now, that's probably the simplest way to read line by line. Just to show you how this works kind of underneath the hood, if you wanted to do a more manual thing, possibly you don't have a CR delimited file, you have something else as your delimiter, you need to read up to a character and then do some other processing. Here's the more manual way of doing that. Again, lines.txt as file name read stream, the add end test, and in here I do stream up to the character CR, add it to the list. It could be up to anything. So if I go ahead and browse up to, You see that this is implemented all over the place, but if you look at stream, answer a subcollection from the position to the occurrence, if any, of the object. The stream is left positioned after the object. So basically, you're reading up to that object and ignoring that object for the purposes of reading into memory. So as far as up to a CR, you're reading everything except the CR and then discarding the CR and moving along. Same thing for any other delimiting object you want to read. And this is very common in stream protocol to do this kind of thing. So. This other outer block that you're looking at, notice how I've enclosed everything here in a block, and I've got this ensure at the end. Well, ensure is an interesting message. If you think you might get an exception while you're reading a file, while you're doing anything else, you can send ensure to the code in the block, and what it does is it says, regardless of any exceptions that happen here, make sure that at the end of all that, 
we do this inside this block, in this case, close the stream. Since it's an external file resource, you want to make sure no matter what happens, close that file resource. If it were a database connection, same kind of thing, you'd want to make sure close that down. So this is going to run the same way as the shorter code above, just with a little more manual work and a little more safety. So let's go ahead and do it. Do it. And we'll take a look at the list object again. And you can see it's the same thing. So this is the basics of file handling as far as reading and opening files. What I'd encourage you to do is go ahead and take a look at two things. Go ahead and look at class file name and go ahead and look at class stream with a capital S and look at the protocols under them. So again, let's go to browse class named S-T-R-E-A-M. And if you go here, you can find you've got all these messages. So very long thing. You can look at stream modes as far as what kinds of conventions they have for reading. You can get the uh, character writing, you can get reading, so you get all these things. This is the protocol that's common across all the various kinds of streams. And if you go to the hierarchy, you'll find that that's common across internal streaming, external streaming over files, the whole lot. So highly encourage you to look at class file name and class stream to get a better idea of the kinds of things I was talking about today. So until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.